Uh, hello, this is a short note about uh, downloading and installing uh, OpenCPN and then uh, installing the training chart that we use in the StarPath online course in marine navigation. And that it, it will focus just on that and maybe a few tools and then we, then we go on. So the first we get the program, we go to uh, uh, OpenCPN.org and then that's this website here and you go to Downloads and I'm on a PC for now. There's a PC and a Mac version. Uh, open CPN here is this current version. Windows download. And I'm run. I'm going to just say run. Um, publisher, OK. Yes. I'm just going to do this in live time so that you can see English, see how much time's involved here. I'm saying yes to, and also I'm just saying yes to everything. It's a um, uh, pretty standard install. There's about 32 or 34 languages that are supported. So that's in part why this is such a popular, popular program worldwide, internationally, uh, in addition to the fact that there are remarkable features and functionality of this program, some of which you don't see in others, and some features you see only in very expensive programs. This one, of course, is at no charge. Okay, so that's done. This is the version we're running. I'm going to label that in the in the video here, because I do have some older videos on this that use a different version. So that's okay. We're done. So this is done, and that's the program. Publisher open uh, run. I think we can close that now. And we'll come back to this in a minute because we have to go get a chart in a minute. Okay, so the program's installed. It defaults to that location off the coast of Africa. That's the location of the boat temporarily. And then, but here's the first thing. This is the area of Washington and Vancouver Island and so forth. But you see what a terrible, not terrible, but the base map is very basic. And that's because the program is designed to be run on very simple computers. And so, but we want to improve that. So we want to get a better base map. So let's do that. And it's a, it's a good, it's a start looking at the, at these functionalities. So on this menu bar over here, I'm going to click the wrench. That's the options. Then you go to charts. Then you go to chart downloader here. And then you can always just repeat this video and look at it. Then I want to do add. And then this is the base map up here. And I want to click that one. So it's not just the top one. I click the one right here. And then, then look where it's going to put the charts. It's going to make a folder in our documents folder called charts. And then it's going to make a folder and put these high resolution files in there. And that's fine. You say OK. Then you have to say update. And this is a functionality, by the way. We're doing it with these, with these maps, uh, these background files. But this is also the same functionality, this chart downloader and this update and so forth. This is how you'll keep any of your US charts up to date automatically. It'll, tell, it'll let you know which ones are uh, outdated. And we want the bottom one. So we're going to highlight the bottom one, 38, full resolution, 38 megabytes. And then we say download selected chart. Uh, and it's doing it 20, 34, 38. That's the 38 megabytes. Is that completely done now? That flash, flash looks like it's done. Uh, let me just move this. It doesn't seem to. Okay, I better hit apply. Apply is important. The button on this pro. Yeah, okay, we're done. So that's done. Now, when you look at this 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 ba background map, you see of this Puget Sound area it looks more like what the area really does look like. So, what's our next step? I want to do. We're in the right folder. Uh, I've just mentioned the toolbars. There's two toolbars here. Uh, there's one over here, and there's one over here, which can open and close. And that's where we're going to do very... So this is the options where you're going to uh, do the setups and so forth, like that, cancel. And these are active, uh, active buttons, I mean active resources in, in here. And we're going to look at that one in a moment. But right now, I want to just go and get the chart. That our training chart that we use. So I'm going back to this browser, and you get that at the support. The, the link is called starpath.com forward slash navbook. That is the support page for this textbook. 
This is our textbook that we use right here. You see it at startpath.com. That's our textbook. And this is the support link. All of our textbooks and resource books have a support page. Um, and this is the chart we want, raster navigation chart. That's a um, graphic image of the paper chart. And that's the one we want to load. This is one we custom made for this chart for our students, but it's certainly open to the public. And we downloaded that. What do you want to do with it? Oh, let's try just open. I mostly uh, open. Let's see what we get. Open. Uh, so it's, uh, what's it doing here? I usually use a Wind a Mac. Um, let's see, did it do, did it? not responding um, oh yeah well there it's responding okay good I think we're looking inside the zip file here for now you could save this and then unzip it but this is the Windows 10 behavior of a zip file now I want to duplicate this uh, this Explorer file so I'm going to tap it and then do let's say control N does that work yeah control N and uh, then I want to go uh, over here to get to downloads. Again, the reason this is a little bit sluggish in behavior is I'm working on a virtual machine. I'm working on a virtual machine that makes maybe like goes a little bit slower. That's too bad though. Here, um, let okay. Oh, there we go. We're alive again. Documents and charts. Okay, so here's the, we're going here's here's the place where you see that that that's the high resolution base map and that's in charts. We want to put all of our charts in the same place. So I'm going to grab that guy and put him here. Okay. That's there. So now we've got and inside this folder are the typical things that make up the chart. This is the actual chart file. It's about 27 megabytes. This is some metadata and this is just some text about these two products together. You can look at that later. Okay, so we're all set to go. We're done with that. Now we're back to our charts. Now we want to do what's called installing a chart. Installing a chart means basically just telling this program where are you store where are you storing the charts. We're not doing anything special to them here. We're just saying where they are. When we start using the ENC, ENC, electronic navigation charts, then when we install them, it's actually doing something. But here it's not doing anything. So we click options again and charts we want. That's where we are. And now we want to add a directory to this. And that directory is this one. So you highlight that. Just highlight it once. Don't open it or anything. We just want to know what folder. Select the folder. Now we've got that in here. I think apply. Always with this thing, you, I think you always have to hit apply. If you just hit OK, it's going to just kind of forget what you did. Now that red outline, that's the chart. And, uh, but it's going to behave a little bit. This is the chart bar. I'm going to come back and discuss that later as a very valuable function of the program, this chart bar. And there's our chart. But it's kind of going to have a little bit jerky behavior here because the default is quilted charts. So let's go over to this, this one here, this toolbar. Click it. Go up here and say, enable chart quilting. For now, let's shut that off. Once we have, uh, let's see, okay, shut that off. When we shut that off, it's going to show the border. You see, when you when you enable quilting, it trims that down. It it trims that down right to the edge, so they can match up one on the other. But when you when you turn off the quilting, then you get to see the border. And actually, then you can read what's in the border here, which is kind of nice. And you'll see when you do that, just a training chart. That also, the default of OpenCPN is to show the, the soundings in these great huge letters up here. That's going to be a personal preference. You're going. I'm going to just shut that off. What's that? Sh show chart outlines. That's fine. Show depth units. That's. I don't want that. We'll come back. We can figure that out, or we can always just turn that on if we're not sure. But look at this. I think we're going to know what that is. Okay, sounding and fathoms. All right, so we have our chart loaded. That's step one. We're ready to start doing some navigation. Let me check my notes. What are we after here? Okay, read latitude and longitude. Now, I don't know how well you can see that, but as I move my cursor here, the lat longitude shows up down here in the bottom. And we can do that in degrees and minutes or 
in, um, in uh, decimal degrees. And there's times when one or the other is, is valuable. And so that's that. We also have other ways that we can turn it on. We can turn it on and have it be a big, big like sign up here. I forget what that's, they call those signs, but there's a big pop-up window and we can show latitude, longitude, and great big numbers up here if we want to. But for now, just look at it down here. The number you're seeing over here is range and bearing to the boat. And where the boat is, I don't know, but you can always just right click the chart and drop, remove the boat here, right? Now that's the boat. And as you zoom in, the icon will change to a boat. This is a fancy program. We can, we can give this icon the exact, exact dimensions of our real boat. And that's real interesting if you want to look at some two vessels interacting very close together. But that's another detail we come back to. Right now we just have, that's our boat. And we can move it off the chart anywhere we want. Uh, let's see. The other thing, okay, a couple basic things here. One tool, uh, yeah, one tool that's very nice that you use all over and over again is you see right click, does it say measure here? Measure. And you see that M. You just hit the M key to get the measure. I can either click here, and then I'm measuring the range and bearing. You see, that's 069 degrees, and that's presumably true. I'm going to address that in a moment. And it's 15.8 nautical miles, right? So that's a tool, and you escape gets you out of there. Or you just hit the M key, and you measure range and bearing very powerful tool very nice functionality to it this says this is five this says the scale here down the bottom is five miles i could hit the m key and go from here to here and you know see okay well i moved it but that's five miles all right now the other thing we want to do is this chart is uh, got the variation on this chart is from 19 we're back here. What year is this? 1998. This is a training chart. A 1865 TR. That means it was frozen in that year and nothing changes so we can make practice problems and know things are the same. But that means we want to use the variation from that year. And the, if you look around, here's a rose, here's a rose, there's another one up here. These vary from, you know, 19 degrees up to 19.5, or no, 19.8 degrees. But we use 20.0 at all times for our variation on all of our workbook exercises and our quizzes. So we want 20.0. But before we can set that, we want to set that to magnetic. So you go up here, you hit the options, you go to display, it's under units. And here's where you set the lat lawn is degrees and decimal minutes. You could also make it decimal degrees and so forth. Here is show true bearings. And if you want to show, show magnetic bearings, it's here. But look, I can't, uh, I, w I want to put in 20 degrees and it won't let me. And we want to show magnetic for now. And so what this is reminding is to set the magnetic variation manually, you must disable the World Magnetic Model plugin. This is a fantastic tool that comes with OpenCPN that reads a very accurate magnetic variation anywhere in the world at any time. If, if the chart... You know, if the chart has a slightly different number, then chances are that this function is right. This is a program called MAGVAR. That's a, a, a quite a famous program. All right, but we have to shut it off because we don't want to know the best 19, 2020 variation. We want to know back 19, we want it 20 degrees. So we just cancel this for now. You go back to the options, go to the plugins, go to World Magnetic Model. See, it's turned on, and I want to disable it. Okay, enable, that means it's disabled. Apply. Okay, good, done. Now uh, we go back to here. Now we go uh, display units. Degrees, we want to show, we're going to show magnetic for now. And that's show magnetic bearings and headings. And here we want 20.0. 20 20.0, 20 and that's, they're calling that plus because of the rule correcting add east. So if I have magnetic bearing of, uh, of 50, 50 degrees, the true would be 70. 50 plus 2, 20, 70. Okay, so that's that. Apply. Okay. Now when we do our M key, see here we go M, here we go M, it's 068M. So that's correct. 
What else do I have? That is it uh, for now. I'm, I'm using a, for this program, it's very nice to have a mouse with a roller, a roller, uh, not a roller ball, but it's just a roller on it because that, well, maybe a roller ball works the same way, but this is just a one-dimensional roller and I'm rolling that. And then if I left click, I can drag the chart like this. I'm rolling it to zoom in and out, or you could zoom in and out like this with this plus key. Or you can go to the keyboard, plus, 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 uh, minus, 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 minus. So that, that's a nice functionality. But that's enough to get started, and I'm going to have another series of videos, but the one after this is going to get into more detail. And then again, we have like 30 videos on this program, and a lot of the nuances we cover in that. But let's. I just want to get all the class going, load this program and start playing with it, and then we'll do more with it later.